Hello and welcome to this video on trade. What will we have a look at in this video? First of all, we'll describe the reasons for trade. Second, we'll explain the effect of trade on the domestic economy. Thirdly, we'll explain the effect of trade on the domestic market. Let's start with the reasons for trade. The first reason is the difference in factor endowment. Certain countries simply lack specific resources. Oil is primarily found in the Middle East. Diamonds are found in Africa. And rainforest is, for example, found in Brazil. This allows these areas or countries to specialize. Another reason for trade is efficiency. If we look at the labor cost in Asia and we compare that to the labor cost in Europe, we'll find efficiency possibilities. Again, this could lead to specialization. The economic theory of comparative advantage lies at the heart of an explanation of international trade. It is outside the scope of this course, but if you want to further explore international trade, you're strongly advised to have a look at this theory. Let's go back to our aggregate supply and aggregate demand model. As we have seen, in AD, there is X minus M, exports minus imports. So if exports increase, X minus M increases. And if net exports increase, aggregate demand will increase. In our diagram, this leads to a shift of the aggregate demand curve to the right. However, as the economy now has access to commodities that were non-existent in the country, it also influences the long-run aggregate supply curve. There's growth of potential GDP, therefore a shift of the long-run aggregate supply curve to the right. What is the effect on domestic markets? Let us first assume that there is no trade. The law of supply and demand are applicable and the price is established on the domestic market. Let us now assume that the world price for a good is lower than the domestic price. That means consumers will purchase on the domestic market those goods that are priced up to the world price. So this is the demand for domestic suppliers. From that point onwards, consumers will purchase their goods and services on the world market. This difference is what we call import. Please be aware that the imports of one country are another country's exports. So in this case, in this particular market, the country might be worse off. However, if the country is able to specialize in another area, it could benefit from exports. Remember, aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Governments and countries are aiming for a trade surplus to have more exports than imports. And successful trading therefore leads to economic growth. However, if there's huge dependency on imports, it restricts economic growth. Let's have a look at the relevance of trade. Christine Lagarde, who is the managing director of the International Monetary Fund, mentions in his speech how the IMF looks at trade. The IMF wants to facilitate expansion and balance growth of international trade, as international trade contributes to high levels of employment and income. If we go back to our model, we will see that an increase in trade eventually increases output, and this increase in output leads to a higher demand for labor therefore higher employment levels and higher income for people. She also mentions the word specialize and that it will lead to lower prices and that consumers will have a variety of goods and services available. Let's have a look at specialization. If a country is able to specialize in a product, it will find efficiency advantages. That means it can produce at a lower cost. And this lower cost will lead to more sales. It can even export more 
which will lead to a further increase in demand. Clearly, the market forces of supply and demand will make sure that equilibrium is established. Another aspect mentioned by Christine Lagarde is lowering prices for consumers. Remember from the previous video, if the world price is below the domestic price, consumers will opt to buy their products on the world market. Eventually, this leads to lower prices for consumers. And lower prices mean that real income increases. Remember, real income is the purchasing power of income. Consumers can purchase more goods and services with that income. We'll explore trade in practice in the next video.